Hey guys, it's Nick Pulaski with the Utah State University Extension IPM program. And today I'm out here in a cantaloupe field and I want to talk to you guys about some of the stuff I'm finding while scouting. So for the most part, all these plants look pretty healthy. However, there's a few sporadic plants here and there that are starting to kind of yellow, die, and just wilt. And it looks like they won't produce. So I want to talk about what's going on here. So my first guess about what's happening to these cantaloupe plants is something called verticillium wilt. Verticillium wilt is caused by the fungus verticillium dalliae, which is a soil-borne fungus that lives in the soil and causes plant dieback. This disease is widespread in Utah cantaloupe production. We'll also see it in tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, and eggplants as well. So again, the fungus verticillium dalliae is soil-borne. Infection occurs when that fungi um, comes in contact with the roots of the host plant and then it'll overwinter as a survival structure called microsclatorium, which are these hard black ball or fungal structures. Verticillium will can be a problem throughout the entire growing season, especially if the field you're growing in was planted with alfalfa the previous year. Some general symptoms you want to look out for include just the wilting of the plant. There might be some chlorosis happening in the leaves. There also might be some red to purple discoloration within the leaves or foliage. And there'll just be overall reduced plant growth and kind of premature production or yields of the cantaloupes themselves. Another symptom to look out for is in the vascular tissue, which is where the xylem and phloem transport nutrients and water through the plant. You might see some subtle discoloration or browning occurring. That's another symptom of verticillium wilt. So unfortunately, verticillium wilt is a huge challenge to manage because the microsclerotia from the fungus can survive in the soil for almost an entire decade waiting for the next host to be planted. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of chemical control available for verticillium wilt, so the best management options are to plant your cantaloupes or other vegetables on raised beds or higher up so there's better water drainage. Also see if there's any varieties on the market that are less susceptible to ver verticillium wilt and possibly consider crop rotation to something that isn't as susceptible. When you're out on your farm or garden scouting for ver verticillium wilt, you want to look when the temperatures are about 60 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit and the symptoms will probably be expressed on one side of the plant to begin with, and symptoms may not appear until the host starts initiating flowering. Another disease that you might see that's similar to verticillium wilt is fusarium wilt, which is widespread again in Utah cantaloupe, pea, tomato, celery, cucumber, pumpkin, watermelon production. And basically fusarium wilt is caused by forme specalis, special forms of the fusarium oxysporum fungus. Like verticillium well, it's a soil-borne fungus which takes a lot of cultural control practices to manage. It'd be a smart idea to make sure to clean your equipment and your shoes, especially when you're working in an infected area, just to prevent from spreading it to other areas of your farm.